If you'd like to engage us in conversation, why don't you please give us a call here at 523-8989. If you have a question or a comment, Brother Tupac Shakur, again, is the national chairman of the New African Panthers. My name is Bomani Bakari. The program is Round Midnight. 523-8989. Please turn your radios down when you're enjoying us in conversation. Hello, you're on the air live with WRFG. Question or comment? Question. Please go right ahead. Yes, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a brother, and um, and I've been listening to the, a lot of movement speeches on on the RFG station, and I'd like to know, you know, how can I get involved in um in this black um this black is, what is the Panther movement? The New African Panthers. Yes, brother, you talk about the New African Panthers. New African Panthers. I'm sorry. That's okay. We're having a, a meeting tomorrow at three o'clock. At Woodrow's Library, room 302, and we would really appreciate it if you could come, and you'll learn a lot just from being there. Hello, you're on the air live with WRFG. Question or comment? What does it take to be a Black Panther? Okay, to be a New African Panther, um, well, you have to be between the ages of 13 and 25, and uh, it just takes for you to be willing to to to, uh, to read and learn about your history, and to sacrifice some of the negative things that you may or may not have been doing in your, in your slave existence. Uh, okay. Okay. Hello, you're on the air live with WRFG. Question or comment? Yes, I have a um, question to ask. Yes. So I'd like to commend you brothers also for your um, work that you're doing. Thank you. And okay. secondly, I'd just like you to briefly maybe say something about the Black Panthers of the 60s and, therefore, and then tell what your if you're progressing from that, if there's any changes that you're making from the Black Panthers in and what you are planning to do soon. Okay. Uh, well, those the Black Panthers from the 60s, those are my heroes. Those are all, My mother was a Panther. My stepfather, you know, most of my family, uncles were in the Panthers. And what we're trying to do as Panthers is have a uh, start earlier, first of all, and uh, start by education first as a means of self-defense. And then move on from there. Okay. Secondly, also, let me ask you this. Huh? You say that this age group is between 13 and 25, right? Right. Um, after someone's 25, 26 years old, what is their role then? Okay, well, our parent organization is called the New African People's Organization. And they're the ones who really, like, they, they help to guide us. And uh, you, you would fall right into their age limit. Okay. For uh, suggestive reading, what books could you recommend for brothers out there now that are trying to find more of their African history? The Autobiography of Malcolm X, um, Part of My Soul with Winnie, Winnie, by Winnie Mandela, and uh, the newspaper is called By Any Means Necessary. And uh, could this brother necessarily come to tomorrow afternoon the meeting? Definitely. And, I'll be there tomorrow at 3. All right. Tomorrow I'll be looking forward to you. There okay. it is. Okay. Thank you for calling, my brother, and participating. Okay. Okay. Free to land. What's really great, I hear a lot of young people calling us up tonight for the first time, and that's really good that's news positive. to me. Yes, indeed, that's brother. That's on the Hello, you're on the air live with WRFG. Question or comment? Uh, question. Please. Well, first of all, I'd like to commend the brothers for uh, what they're trying to do because our youth definitely need some direction out there. Then my question is, uh, what role do the sisters play in this organization? I'm, I see you have two brothers on there. Are there any sisters that are, are in the organization? And how do they see the role of young sisters in, in the struggle? Um, well, the Panthers is, is crazy co-ed. We got, we got sisters as well as brothers. And uh, there's a sister, a uh, real positive sister named Mahadi. She always tells me uh, that we need to fight against sexism, even in the revolution, even in um, our own organization. So the Panthers is, is not for, for, for the brothers and it's not for the sisters. It's for our people. It's for basically the youth. To come together, and the sisters, uh, they work as hard as the as the brothers, and we're all in it together, just trying to build it. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank, Thank you. you for, for your calling. Sister. Free to land. I respect you and your guests. I respect you too, brother. Uh, listen, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, it seems like to me, we need to try to also strive to have a massive PR uh, amongst our, our people as far as awakening them. I mean, uh, in South Carolina, did you hear about this restaurant that says that they don't want to serve blacks? No, I didn't. I think it's in um, 
let me see. I, I don't know if it's Conway, South Carolina, or something. But you know, in this at this late date and time, mm-hmm. but we're still begging them to spend our money with them. Right. And I'm and then I saw what the the uh, and also I was looking at the the news when they showed. Uh, about the way the blacks do being treated in, in Virginia. Uh-huh. This one sister from Howard says that she wanted to, um, she would be be back. She wanted to go back. Mm-hmm. And even after uh, the students were being badgered, you know, I saw, uh, I have a, a newspaper a clipping where uh, three white policemen mm-hmm. were holding down a sister. Mm-hmm. You know, it took three, three white police in riot gear. Mm-hmm. You know, and here this sister is talking about well, not the sisters that was being held up, but one of the sisters that they interviewed said that she wouldn't, they, they hoped that the city wouldn't look down on uh, the, the, all the black college students because of what a few did. But I'm like, why, why does she want to go back to a place that treated them like dogs? Right. You know? Right. And they said the police were out there from the start. Exactly. I, you know, <laughs> that's how they're going to do it. But uh, about the restaurant, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's important as uh, New Africans that we realize that... Um, we can do a lot of these things on our own. First of all, I don't even sh- I don't even eat in white restaurants. They, they can't <laughs> cook. Do I. But uh, and uh, so we should we should really start being more independent on that note. Mm-hmm. But in terms of uh, going back to Virginia Beach, no one can tell us where we can and cannot go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we need to start really, um, you know, force pushing that too. You know. It's, it's no longer should we turn the other cheek. It's all about, you know, going out there. But no, I mean, as far as uh, patronizing... Uh, oh, forget that, you know. Just squash that, you know, zap that right on through. But uh, the sister come around, she'll realize that they call her, you know. They, they, they're going to make sure that she don't come back. Mm-hmm. But just straight words. But uh, we, don't, we should uh, be real wary of uh, downplaying our own race because we get enough of it from the others. Mm-hmm. But uh, just try to understand where, where we're coming from, you know. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you, too, about the, the, the rift between, uh, if you do know or would care to comment, uh, I can't call her the artist, the brother with the uh, group Public Enemy. who Griff. Griff. Right. Uh, Minister Griff or something like Griff that. Griff was yeah. the Minister yeah. of Information. For uh, let's take this call and, and, right. and, and like, like to get your comment on about what happened with him. Okay. Hello, you're on the air live with WRFG. Question or comment? Yeah, I got a question. I'm checking your brothers out. What you're doing is very positive and, you know, power to the people to write on. I uh, had a chance to observe on the uh, news, and you know, if I'm if I'm off base, stop me, and I'll just you know cool out. But I I heard this uh, newscast by this minister, Father Starlings, in uh, D.C. He left the Catholic Church and uh, formed this group, you know, his church, a money church. And the reason for leaving the Catholic Church was because of the insistence of the black people. And I don't have no problem with that because I agree with that. And he was saying that the celibacy by its very own being was was like out of order, but now there's a charge against uh, Father Starlings that like he's a homosexual and he supposedly you know did something to a to a 16 year old choir boy. And I was sitting there checking the brother out and watching him, and what he's doing is very positive. But I distinctly thought I saw a bunch of feminine features. Now, am I wrong for checking the brother out and seeing this on the air? Uh, what do you brother think about you know that whole scenario? Okay, you. Uh it's, once again, it's important that we be weary of what the media does to some of our leaders and some of our spokespeople. As soon as they see a black person stand up and say, you know, I don't think this is right and y'all dogging us, right away, trust me, it's happened with the COINTELPRO, with the Black Panther Party, and it happened again. They start to shoot just with the pe- with the public enemy also. As soon as the, somebody speaks out, they want to cut you down. They want to discredit you as a leader and as a, as a spokesman. So we really have to be weary as as black people, as new African people, of letting somebody tell us, you know, you, you, I mean, we got to, I mean, if the brother is a homosexual or not, that goes beyond, but we need to support these brothers instead of trying to drop them at, at the first sight. You know, you really need to help them.